a different Hi, it's me, Mr. Ryan. I wanted to tell you a story. A long, long time ago, back before Jesus, back before Daniel, back before Solomon, there was a prophet named Samuel. This story comes from 1 Samuel 16. There's a prophet called Samuel. He lived in Israel. Now there was a king in Israel, and Samuel didn't like the king. Sam and in 1 Samuel 16 verse 1 said, God said unto Samuel, How long will you mourn about Saul, seeing I, has re I have rejected him from being king over Israel? Saul was king over Israel, but Saul was not a good king. Saul was a bad king in that he didn't like knock down the temple or persecute Christians or like that. He just didn't do what God told him to do. You might be thinking, king, why couldn't he do whatever he wanted? Some of you wish you were king or queen. You want to have that power. You want to have that do whatever I say. Some people think kings are like that. But Saul was a king that was put there by God. And Saul was expected to obey God just like you and I are. So Samuel wasn't pleased with Saul, the king. So God said, I'll, I'm going to send you, I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. One of Jesse's sons is going to be king. So Samuel did that. Wait, I'm sorry. Saul, or God said, fill the horn, fill your horn with oil and go. And I'm going, and we're going to go find the new king. So, in verse 4, it says, Samuel did that which Jehovah spoke, and came to Bethlehem. Now, yeah, we're talking about that, Bethlehem, but this is a long time before Jesus was born. And the elders came to him and said, Are you coming peacefully? And Samuel said, Peacefully. Yep, I'm coming. I come to sacrifice unto God. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. So, Samuel gets there, and here's Jesse and all of his sons. So it came to pass, when they were come, that he looked on Eliab, the firstborn. And Samuel looked at, Sam, Samuel looked at Jesse's first son. Usually, the firstborn would be the king, right? The firstborn got all of the perks. The firstborn got, you know, firstborn was like a little bit in charge of the family. So Samuel looked at him and said, hmm, I bet he's going to be the king. But God said to Samuel, don't look at him. Don't look on his countenance. God really said, don't look at the way he looks. Don't look at how tall he is. I have not picked him. And then God said a very famous sentence that we hear a lot. God said to Samuel, God looks not as a man looks. Man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. You might think you see somebody tall and strong, but that's not what God, God sees him a little differently than you do because God can see on the inside. So Jesse called the second son, Abinadab, and he went before Samuel. Samuel went, or not Samuel, Jehovah went, nope. And then Shama, the next son. Nope. And Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, God have, hasn't picked any of these. So God said, go to Jesse and I will show you one of his sons that are to be king. And Jesse showed him all of his sons. So Samuel was thinking, hmm, and then Samuel found the loophole. Samuel found how God could still be right when it looked like he was a little bit wrong there. He said, do you have any other children? Samuel said unto Jesse, are here all of your children? And Jesse said, there is one more, the youngest, and he's tending the sheep. He's out in the field. He's young. 
I I think Jesse's youngest son was like 10, 12 years old at this point. And Samuel said, go get him. Send and fetch him, and we will not sit down until he comes here. So they all stood up, and they sent and brought him. And the youngest son was ruddy, had a good countenance, beautiful to look upon. And Jehovah said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. And Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of Jehovah came mightily upon David that day. So, David was Jesse's youngest son. David from the town of Bethlehem. Forth a horn of oil. And this is what he would have put the oil in. Not like a car horn, but like a, this is a special way to carry oil and uh, special liquids like this. They would have filled this up. What kind of oil was it? Well, here's extra virgin olive oil. Olive oil is kind of what they would have used. They would have used a mixture of a bunch of things. But he would have filled up the horn with this kind of oil. Now, anointing is a special symbol that God has for saying that something's set apart for divine use. David was anointed to show that he was going to be the king. Now, we do some anointing in our church as well. For Ash Wednesday, we do anointing. And if you've ever been baptized after the baptism, the pastors will do a little anointing for you. They will take, they will dip their finger in oil and make the sign of the cross on your forehead. Now, anointing is a symbol. It's like communion or it's like baptism. It's a special thing we do and we um, kind of do other things to show something else. We put the oil on us. We are anointed to show that we have God's provide divine protection. We show that we are set apart for God to use us. This is what Samuel did for David. Now, Samuel would have done it a different way, though. You saw the horn of oil. So that wasn't just a little bit of oil. So here's what Samuel would have done. Samuel would have taken the oil. Now, I have vegetable oil, not the same as this, because this is kind of expensive. This is kind of not. So he would have taken the horn of oil and poured it all over David's head. Now, that also shows a different kind of anointing that David would have been very familiar with. When he took care of the sheep, he would have poured stuff over their head to keep the bugs off, to help keep them healthy. So that anointing also on those sheep was for protection. So the idea that you're anointed, you're set apart for God's use, and you're being protected by God was the special symbol that anointing is and was and is today. However, again, there wouldn't have been a tiny little bit the anointing would have been like this. Would have been veg would not vegetable oil, but oil all over your head running down. So you would have known complete protection. You would this wasn't just a little mark, just tiny a little tiny bit. David would have been drenched, head soaked in oil, just like me. Maybe even a little worse. Well, I just tried to hose myself off a little bit. But this day for David was special. This day God set him apart to be king. Now God kind of, in almost exactly the same way, has set you apart as a Christian. When Jesus died on the cross for you, he gave you divine protection. He paid for your sins. And he set you apart for divine use as well. Without even really having to be anointed. Sometimes we say we're anointed by the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit, who is God, comes upon you and anoints you so that he kind of comes all over you and takes over, takes you over and sets you apart for divine use. So I really enjoyed that story, and I want to talk to you a little bit more uh, about David coming up, but I just wanted to tell you really the first story about David and how he was anointed in Bethlehem.